Hey guys, in this video I'm just gonna show you how to create uh, an API on using uh, Azure API management. Azure API management essentially is a one-stop shop that helps an organization actually publish and control how their APIs are published or used to the public. So it allows for a couple of things like uh, what do you call users or setting code tests for users who use your applications and all of those type of uh, what do you call functionalities that come with it. The benefit is that the API uh, management actually has a component which is a gateway. It has a portal for administrating, let's say, access, getting reports of usages, who uses your report more and all of that. And it also has a developer portal. Cool, cool. So that's that. Uh, so this thing has a couple of information that I wanted to go to is you have API management policies. Their policies can be both inbound and outbound. So outbound policies are for the requests that are going out inbound are to manipulate the, what do you call, uh, the requests before they actually hit or filter the request before they hit your actual services, essentially. So cool. There's a couple of ways to create uh, services and all of that. Then with that, some of the some of the functionalities that you get with API management is developers can actually get more responses from this API, from the API manager, essentially. So mock out responses and all of those type of things for testing purposes or explorative purposes. So cool. You can secure this thing using sub subscription keys. So users actually subscribe to your application and they start using the application. So without further ado, I'll just go to uh, Azure. And what I'll do is start creating the API manager. I know the deployment of this thing takes time. So you might need to bear with me or might cut the video, then come back and record uh, the other part where I demo the internals of it. So cool. Gonna use Azure Cloud Shell again for this. Then what I'll do is AZ group create uh there's this name api manager that's my uh rg name let me just put rg there then location again i'm gonna use my favorite which is west europe my favorite because it works in most cases not for any other reasons cool and that resource group created now I'm going to run a command called API, API, M, API manage, uh, meant, essentially. So take note of this API, AZ, API, I am create. Then I'm going to put, uh, what do you call name? Uh, then I'm going to say my API, um, manager, both just to give it an existing uh, name, location. I'm going to say West Europe. Then I'm going to specify publish uh, image. So the person who will be publishing this uh, set of information, I'll just put my email address together with it. That. A cool resource group. Resource group. It is going to be API manager SRG. Then publisher H name. I'll say Garalo. Then I'm gonna specify the SKU name, which is gonna be consumption. So there's a couple of well, I think it's mostly on consumption with API manager. Could have a premium, I don't remember well. The command group API manager. Okay, cool. Looks like this particular thing is not necessarily fully specced. Uh, the command API M. So it's not fully uh, what you call supported, maybe. Anyways, we're using that. It's running in the background. Show you how to publish the so while it's doing that, let's just play around and look at the nodes, some of the things you can actually secure APIs using uh, 
go. So if you take that, then oh, that's back. So when using certificates, you can only use certificates from a trusted or public CA. Then, yeah. So subscriptions that, as I mentioned, you can access, make a manage access using subscriptions. You can give access to all the APIs. You can give access to a single API, or you can give access to a product. So a product is a group of APIs, essentially an API manager that you can give a subscription access to, and there's a couple of access levels. Developer portal works well for developers to explore and they need to have read access to those APIs or products or all that to be able to, you know, play around with those type of uh, APIs on the developer portal. Julio. Yeah, you know what? This thing is going to take forever. So what I'll do is I'll stop the video here. Once I'm done, I'll... I don't want to do a lot of video editing though. Cool. I'll do this video immediately after this. I'll just add another video that shows you how. Actually, there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Ah, hold up. Hold up. Let's try to refresh this. API manager group. There it is. Ah, there's our API management savers. But there's a couple of nuances in this thing that comes in. So if you look at this, that's the access tier, right? That, that is our gateway. Most of these resources take time to deploy actions. If this is already up and running 404, well, but there's a lot. So if you wanted to, let's say, access the developer portal and all of that, it's a mission enough. Well, Without further ado, what I'll do is we'll talk about inputting uh, what do you call uh, an API, a backend API. So I clicked on my uh, what do you call app service uh, API manager. Uh, then I'm gonna select on APIs. So when I get to APIs, uh, I'm gonna choose. There's a couple of ways to actually create APIs. So you can create an API. I mean, as your resource that exists. So if you have a web service, function app, container, whatever, you can use that. You can use Open API to do that. Waddell, Wisdell, WebSocket, GraphQL. You can actually do a manual import. So what I'm going to do is Open API. This is the standard uh, supported across. Then what I'm going to what I'm going to do here is I'm going to provide a URL given to us by Microsoft. Put that, they call it demo reference app, the name different demo reference app. I'm not going to change much there. Uh, API URL suffix. Uh, put anything there, but okay, let's, and let's just use whatever they have there. Okay, cool. That's that. That's the basic setup. If I go to full setup, you get more information. So you can choose the schema that you want, HTTP, HTTPS, or both. That allows you for both of that. And that's the thing. If you wanted to create text, if you wanted to add products, let's say my product, right? You can also version the API and tell us what sort of version is that and all that. Cool. Once that's created, uh, you can then create. Uh, once that's been created, if I go to my API and then can then go to configuration. So see, there's a bunch of endpoints there that are defined. I can go to settings. Uh, where you come? On settings, it gives me access to what I was doing there. Then you see what it's requiring. If I wanted to provide the subscription key, it will technically require that header or that query param to have my subscription key. I could customize it if I wanted to. Diagnosis, uh, I can enable app insight. If I do that, I need to configure an app insight configured. 
your monitor local basically that that the host type that i wanted i could specify it on this level there's tests uh where you come uh there's test endpoints here yeah copy let's try that name that can really do much cool so here subscriptions in play if i wanted to there's a building subscription i could create a subscription here and say uh, my 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 demo access right uh, let me put that i can limit the scope to product if i limit it to product remember i said there's uh, a product called what did i call that product and go here products let me just create a product display name my product right that in my product i can add an api okay I don't know why the window is doing that. Let me try it on separate screen. Still doing the same thing. So I actually just gave up and keep on APIs and demo conference next. Cool. So what I wanted to do was in subscriptions, create a new subscription, call it mine. Demo subs. Right, that's that. I can either give it all APIs, a specific API. If I go specific API, see, I can give it demo a conference directly. If I go products, I can actually create, select my product. So every app that's added in there, uh, this particular subscription will have uh, access to. But because now I just have one API, it doesn't really make a bunch of a different cool that's my subscription so if i do that i'll then pass this information subscription key into into my two separate headers as prescribed in the settings themselves so that's that's, that's api manager essentially so you could have a bunch of these essentially if you wanted to so i could do more or less at an API, let me edit manually. Let me see. That's not going to happen then. That's that. That's my app, it doesn't have operations and all of that. So basically, this is how it works, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in, and let's meet on another video.